Don't forget to like and subscribe, and share your opinion down below. Am I the idiot for forcing a reunion between my fiancé and her family? My fiancé F22 and I am 24 have been together for years. We got engaged after we found out that we were expecting a baby boy. My fiancé isn't on good terms with her family especially her mom. I should mention that at 17 my fiancé was pregnant but her mom and everybody in the family wasn't approving of her having it. They kept pressuring her to have an abortion then give up the baby for adoption. My fiancé ended up having a stillbirth a few months later she moved out of the house and that's when we met. She cut contact with her family and her mom. No one came to our engagement party because my fiancé didn't allow them although they tried to make amends. She didn't let them visit after we had our baby and despite the text she received from them she refused to let them see the baby. I tried to talk to her and see what's going on. She said that she fears they'll force her to give up her baby but that's not true. We're a family now and she is an adult and a responsible mother. Circumstances are different. And also, they kept saying they want to meet their grandbaby. So, they love him and there was no harm if they treat him with love and compassion. She refused to discuss it. Her mom contacted me via my mother. She said wanted me to arrange for a meeting with my fiancé because the family brought gifts for the baby and want to visit. I made arrangements and I ordered food but didn't tell my fiancé until they were at the door, so she won't try to make excuses. She saw her mom and family members at the door. She yelled when they tried to greet her and told them to leave before she calls the police. I tried to calm me her down that's when she said I was unbelievable for arranging for this visit. She kept yelling at me after they left and said she no longer trust me with the baby after I betrayed her by letting her family come over behind her back. I told her to just try to start over for the sake of our son, but she went on about her family being toxic although they did all they could to reconcile. She's mad and isn't talking to me. She wants to go stay with a friend saying I might invite her family again and cause her to stress out. But I just thought that was a huge overreaction because if that was me, I'd probably just let go of what happened and move on. I just wanted to say that I already spoke to her family. They said they were willing to do whatever to mend the relationship. They pointed out that our son deserves a relationship with his cousins because they want to see him as well as the rest of the family. I've seen the kids they're innocent in this and they want to meet their cousin which is one of the reasons why I think that my fiancé is not thinking ahead and letting her anger and resentment affect her decision making. I suggested therapy but still won't accept it. You're the idiot. You betrayed your partner and have broken her trust. I do not have contact with my mother or her family due to their actions. If I was her, I would be ending the relationship with you as you've proven yourself to not be on her side. Whoa, dude, you're the idiot. Just because you think you would react a certain way does not entitle you to demand your fiancé react the same way, much less trap her in a situation where she is forced to react at all. This goes double for a situation where you physically are incapable of enduring the same set of circumstances. You do in fact need to earn back trust here, if you even can. You're the idiot. Majorly. If she doesn't want to see her family, you should never force that. This woman lost her child and had no support from her family and you accept her to forgive and forget? I hope she finds a partner who respects her boundaries. Am I the idiot for cancelling my girlfriend's niece birthday party because of her daughter? I have been dating my current girlfriend for nearly two years. I have a 14 year old son Alan, and she has a 16 year old daughter, Kay. They didn't officially live with me but stayed over a fair amount. We all know how hard COVID made it on all of us. I won't complain as others have it much harder than I. My home is just your average run of the mill home in the US. If anything I've been lucky enough to have the means to stay active because of my pool, basketball court and mini gym. For a while my girlfriend's friends, family, and daughter's friends have been visiting daily to make use of the pool and other things. At first it was fine, and I was okay entertaining people however that got old over time. I had a conversation with my girlfriend about telling her people to back off a bit, and though it bothered her, she did. Well 2-3 weeks ago her aunt, uncle, and cousins were over, this was okay to be clear. She asked prior, 
Enjoying the pool. We talked about restrictions being lifted slowly and being grateful for that, and soon after the aunt asked if it would be possible for us to host her cousin's sweet 16 party. I told them that I didn't feel comfortable having that in my house, and they explained that it would just be a very small party because of COVID. I told them if that was the case then I was happy to help. They made arrangements for food and drinks and that was that. Earlier this week Alan came into the kitchen while my girlfriend and I were cooking, and he was visibly upset. I asked what was wrong and he pointed at my girlfriend's daughter saying she's the problem. She's a liar and I know why her dad hates her so much. He went at her pretty hard and I got him to eventually say what the problem was. Apparently, Kay had told her friends my son was filming her and the other girls with his drone while they swam. I asked why she said that, and my girlfriend interjected saying ask if it's true first which made it even tenser. I knew it wasn't true because his drone doesn't have a camera and said as much. I was livid right alongside him. An accusation like that carries weight for people. I told my girlfriend that they needed to confess to the lies now and Kay needed to fix it right then and there. She sent out text saying how she was wrong, but it didn't set right with me at all. I told my girlfriend and daughter they needed to leave and not to come back anytime soon. The next day I explained what happened to her uncle and aunt and informed them the party was cancelled at my home and Kay was to blame. The food arrived the two days before the party and I left it where it was delivered and told them to pick it up a sap which they couldn't do so it was weathered or damaged. I didn't want to touch it and be liable for it. I guess this put them in a huge bind for several reasons and they are now blaming Kay for the mistake. It really snowballed out of control for her and they've been ostracized from their family. Am I the idiot for writing an anonymous letter to a shop owner that treats me badly? There's a small sports shop where I live. It's a mom and pop type place that sells all manner of sporting goods for all ages. When I was a younger my friends and I would shop there but, since our families didn't have a lot of money, we only ever bought piddly stuff like tennis balls and bike inner tubes. The guy that owns the place was always a passive aggressive deed to my friends and I but was professional and polite to all the well dressed customers. Even as a dumb kid I knew something was off. As an adult I've been in this shop several times, but the owner seems to remember me and always treats me with the same weird attitude as he did when I was a kid. He's short, rarely helpful, and watches me like I'm only there to shoplift. A few months ago, I went in there to purchase a several hundred dollar item. But the owner was such a D I ended up walking out and going elsewhere. This episode really pissed me off. But, since this sports shop is the only one within an hour of my house, I didn't want to burn that bridge in case I needed something in a pinch. So, instead of confronting him directly, I sent an anonymous letter telling him how lousy he'd made me feel as a kid and that his inappropriate attitude is costing him business. I told him he's his own worst enemy and concluded with an appeal to stop treating people differently based on the way they look. At the time I felt pretty justified dropping this polemic in the letterbox. Well, apparently my letter drove this guy a little crazy. Through the grapevine I've heard he's been mildly obsessing over it, posting stuff on Facebook saying whoever sent it is pure evil. He's been making his peers read it pushing them to confirm it's all untrue and unfair. Worst of all he's been probing random customers trying to find out who wrote the letter or get a confession. So, now I'm worried that I crossed some sort of line by sending this anonymous letter. I wanted him to realize how he was negatively affecting his community and, well, stop doing that. But the opposite has happened. I never wanted to drive the guy nuts and make him worse. I'm tempted to walk in and tell him to his face it was me, if for no other reason than he stopped taking it out on everyone else, although I probably won't, since I think it'll just make things worse. So, people of the internet, am I the idiot for sending an anonymous letter to this shop owner who's always treated me, and people like me, like crap? Your letter seems appropriate if you've been honest with us about its contents. Him going off the rails is his problem. Not the idiot. Not the idiot. Seems like he deserves it. Makes him look even worse and confirms his poor demeanor. Not the idiot. Unless you used cutout, letters and glued them on like it's a ransom note. Cause if you did. Still not the idiot.
Am I the idiot for telling my wife the truth despite hurting her feelings? My wife and I were going for a swim and we were talking about what I am going to do for work and how I should stick to my guns and just find something part time. The conversation then took a turn and we were discussing how I am also trying to lose weight. During this conversation I mentioned to her how she recently bought a lot of garbage meals out of conveniency and how it's unhealthy for not only ourselves but for our kids. She told me to cook the kids meals then and I refused because I don't think I should take on all her responsibilities just because she doesn't want to hear my complaints and take responsibility for her actions. My wife is super busy and her job can be stressful. I recognize that. I also recognize she doesn't particularly want to come home every night and make healthy meals from scratch. I don't feel these are valid excuses to not do what is required of you as a parent. When I was working and even now that I am not, I would prepare breakfast and lunch for our kids and 9 out of 10 times I would also prepare myself my own dinner, again to take ownership of at least what I am eating. I think it is only fair that my wife could prepare one meal a day for our children. That meal was always dinner. So, after I mentioned to her that she was buying too many of these garbage meals out of conveniency my wife took this as a personal attack, which it was not intended to be, and accused me of making her feel like a bad mother. I immediately explained to her that was not my intentions, but she kept insisting that is what I was doing. I told her I am just telling her the truth. I accused her of manipulating the situation and she accused me of gaslighting her and she stormed away. Later on, I confronted her and told her to again stop manipulating the situation to make me look like the bad guy here and that if she feels like a bad mother then that's basically her guilt talking. I then told her I'm not going to lie to her despite how hurt she may feel as a result of what I say. This has been the source of a lot of idiotic arguments in our marriage for the past 12 years. I took a vow to be honest and I refuse to break it. However, I get the impression she wants me to lie to her. I could sugarcoat what I say to her, but I don't feel it would do either of us any good. Am I the idiot here? You are the idiot. You're free to lead by example and show her how easy it is for a working parent to prepare dinner from scratch each night. Wait, you're not even working right now? Yeah, okay, buddy. You are the idiot. So, your wife works a demanding, stressful job while you're unemployed and have the gall to criticize her cooking choices? You're the stay-at-home parent. You are the one on a diet. Step up. You're not working, but think you get to crap on her for not cooking from scratch on your command. And you're intensely and extremely condescending and dismissive about literally anything she says in response. So, you're allowed to criticize. She's not allowed to defend herself without crap accusations of manipulation. Which is actually what you are doing. Yeah, you are the idiot. She does need to do her part. That's non-negotiable. Her part doesn't have to be cooking from scratch on your command.